Hey everyone, welcome to the Tech Capital World. My name is Bobby Davis, CEO and founder of Coder Foundry. And Kevin, it's a nice rainy day today. It is. Got some but not so good North Carolina weather. I think it's a great day to help someone get over the hump here to find a job. I, agree. I think I think what we're gonna tell them is gonna help them. Help I agree. People hopefully. A lot. Hopefully. Yeah. Based on some things I we've seen that. recently and kind of we've talked about kind of off stream, so we thought we'd talk about this. Before we do that, can I tell you a, a joke that ChatGPT wrote? Oh yeah, let's do that because I'm always up for those jokes. Right. So, so I was, I, okay. I'm just going to tell you the joke, and and there's two jokes, and I, and I really need. Okay, if anybody's here, right, that can explain these to me. I'm either stupid or it's just bad at writing jokes. Now I could just be stupid. I'm all about being educated, right? I'm I'm definitely right. all about being. As it's telling me some jokes about AI. Is here's, here's a couple that it told me. Okay, the first one was. Why was the AI robot feeling cold? Because it left its server running. Does it even think, make, it doesn't make sense, right? It's not that's not me, is no, it? No, usually servers make you hot if it's running. That's, that's what I'm thinking. That's exactly and my then, thought. And then I'm thinking if you turn the server off, you could have a cold start. That would make more sense. Is that what it's trying to say? So maybe they turned the server off. I don't know. Is what I would say. You think? Mm, I don't anyway, know. That's one. I was like, dumb. okay, well that sucks. Um, here's the other yeah. one. Why did the AI cross the road? Classic joke, right? Yeah. To get to know. the to get to the other algorithm. Oh. Surely it's just. Oh. Is that even make sense? <laughs> Isn't algorithm just like some tangently? like aligned word to AI. So they're like, couldn't you replace the word algorithm with any other word tangent related mm -hmm. to AI? And it's still the same joke. Did somebody yeah. tell me in chat, I'm not missing something here. Am I? I'm not, I'm no. not like, I'm not, I'm, re I'm not missing something. Am I? They're just bad. So we, right? They're not jokes. So are now they? we know, we know that there is a job that AI won't replace. <laughs> it's comedian. Jerry Seinfeld has no problems whatsoever. The stand up can can the AI replace yeah. my stand up job? You know, you don't see the stand up comedians, you know, saying they're no longer going to go to the comedy clubs because right, <laughs> right. Uh, Lawson says it's reached the five year old level of joke creation. I'm not sure it has. I've heard bad jokes from five year olds. <laughs> Yeah, there's some there's some good five year old jokes that are pretty good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I saw this too, Ridge Raider Cat GPT. I haven't played with it yet, but there's some version of of. Chat GPT that somebody created. Cat as a, GPT? Cat what does that just give you cat images? Gives you meows or something. I don't know. I haven't played with it yet. I saw okay. a story about it, but I have not messed with it. But I did see it was a okay. thing. So, yeah. Yeah. I thought we'd start out talking about Chat GPT because why not? We always do, don't we? Isn't that the thing these days to talk about? Yeah. Everything, <laughs> everything's about AI. Every, so. Everything's about AI. So, we're going to uh, we're gonna talk about it for you. Um, that's not the goal of today's video. Um, goal of today's we're video not going to talk is about AI much people. longer. So we thought we'd <laughs> maybe. Uh, I'm more optimistic on AI than you are, but I'm still I'm still pessimistic on it. I'm just not as pessimistic as you are. <laughs> I'm, but I'm super, still like. I think what it is, people misunderstand the like they think that I'm. I think because I'm pessimistic on it, it's just going to go away entirely. Yeah, and I don't believe that. I mean, there's some right. good AI tools in um, that I think are flat out amazing. Like yeah. I wrote a scope something in After Effects. You yeah. know, and I thought that was that's, just like that's cool, exactly, that's freaking cool. awesome. Like yep. you know, like it through yep. a movie screen, and it was like before you'd have to use a pen tool and draw draw around it. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I've been looking um, at some of the um, podcast tools removing like ums and ahs and those kind of things using AI. Right, very cool. Suits great, super good. Removing background yeah. noise and that kind of stuff, very cool. Adobe has a product coming out that's gonna do something very yeah. similar. Very cool. I, perfect implementation of AI. Yeah, but it's not gonna make a podcast. That's where right. that's you where can't exactly you can't tell it to oh, make because a it can remove the ums it can make a podcast like well it doesn't need ums if it's sensitive voice anyway so it's just dumb i mean i think it's all going to be around the tooling is where i think it's going to go and right. i and i really think that in far as our land no yeah 
<laughs> we can't just get her its humor. Or it's just bad. <laughs> Connor, Connor, I will I will get to your actual question. I do have it queued up, but I thought that was pretty funny. Maybe that's it. We're, we're now just lowly like we're lowly plebs now. That's it. Yeah. We're just we, we don't even it. we don't even understand the humor that is that is chat GPT mm -hmm. these days. We just don't get it. Yeah, the humor went right over our heads, you know. <laughs> so I think it I think if the if the AI why did the AI get cold it's because it turned the server off because it's a cold restart or a cold reboot something like that well, that's would have not been what a better, it said I know it, it asked said it, why was it the AI the robot on. feeling cold because it left the server running yeah typically the server heats up the room so like that's you know right I, just, I, I don't you need a cold just, reboot yeah you it, know, it, so. it did have some other jokes they just weren't funny I just thought those were just right the ones that were kind of wrong if you will he told like five yeah i think i think someone should give me a 30 minute stand-up routine and netflix should air it i think that's what they should do put it right up there with Using Dave Chappelle, only you know, chat like... gpt <laughs> <laughs> see hey, how quickly maybe. you get booed you maybe. get booed right out of the comedy club maybe see here you go this is this is what we're talking about chapter is kind of cool i built a little project that connects to the open ai and summarizes input text in certain length i call it summarizer that's it that's kind of cool little little apps that are built on it are great i don't know what it does but i like the idea of like building apps on it that's the kind of the that's the thing that's what you guys should be using it for. yeah um yeah okay let's uh less let less less of that talk let's talk about let's talk about our uh our topic today so we want to talk about um staying focused and the reason we want to talk about this is because recently we've seen a couple of where we saw this i can't remember exactly where we saw it. we've seen a couple of different things where somebody had applied to oh, i remember we saw it somebody had applied to um a whole bunch of jobs and we were basically looking at like why why is this person not landed and they had a bad portfolio was one thing but it was also like misaligned right so there's a misalignment mm. they 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 had on their portfolio like i don't know 15 20 different like technology stacks yeah. and languages. languages it was like hmm okay you really know all those you're not showing you know all those based on your projects for, to start off with right and if you did know all of them why you're literally trying to get your first job so i think here's a couple of things we saw like this guy had said i've listed i've tried to find a job and i've got i've put in 500 applications i've had two interviews i get to second round but i haven't been successful yep. so i got 498 what we call soft nose right right 498 got, yeah with, with with two yeses you got to an interview for two of them you got two right. interview requests and people might think okay so i just gotta do a thousand and i'll land the problem is i don't think he's gonna land unless something changes and that's yeah. that's what we need people to understand two problems portfolio was bad the projects are bad we've talked about that at length but we look deeper into this guy's portfolio now full disclosure we're not going to tell you who this person is because he didn't ask us to review his portfolio and we're not in the the business of running people down we want to give you a solution to this problem not necessarily like hey look at you you suck and that's not how we roll right. you know we don't believe right. that he sucks we believe that he's just been he's just doing the wrong things he, needs to, he just like another people exactly. give me bad advice and like yeah. they're just not winning yeah. so um so the main thing i looked at it was so we looked at like his skills were misaligned with the things that he built on his projects okay so i know the django python and like react, react. That. it was just yeah. a, a lot of stuff that he put on here so i believe that he had taken some courses in those things yeah so yeah it wasn't a exactly lie. right right he'd learned the things right he wasn't lying about sort them of. that's that's yeah. a whole other that's a yeah. whole other issue <laughs> Yeah, lying about so then we looked at his, his education look. background and we found where he went to school at and what he learned. And then we looked at the curriculum at the school yep. and then that's, a, this is where this video came from. So we were like, oh, this is the problem. Yeah, that's so the problem that we're seeing is it's like. If you're self learning or you go to some boot camps and we're not saying we're the best boot camp in the world, we think we are, but like <laughs> you can judge, you can take your own judge here. But this is I think this is a common criticism that we can make that's valid that if you go to a course or you're 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 creating your own curriculum self-learning let's talk about self-learners first yeah and your learning is all over the board you're like you're learning a little python a little sql a little c sharp a little bit of java you got some react thrown in there a merge stack maybe you know four or five different yeah. types of databases and, and this um, isn't unusual we see this a lot it's not unusual people do it all the time and you know you got nine languages listed you know you've done all these things and then we look at your projects and they're super, super simple. Yeah. 
which tells us right off the bat, like you haven't like stopped for a second to like learn any of these things. You, yeah, you've never you implemented any of them, right? You've kind of textbook yeah, exactly. learned them, but you've never right. really implemented any of them because you're not built anything with right. them. So have you really learned? I look at it as the whirlwind tour of languages, you know, like, so sometimes you go through the whirlwind tour, but you never really stop, you know? So like, yeah. have you ever been on those food tours, Kevin, where they, you go in there and they give you like, a sandwich this big, you know, right. like, mm, that's a good right. sandwich. Well, we got to go. Let's go get Next, dessert. And you, yeah. you know, like, hey, I'd like to stay here for a second because I'd like to sample more of the menu. But you yeah. can't do that during a food tour. But like, yeah. if you go by yourself and you go eat lunch somewhere, you got to spend more time, work, you know, getting to know maybe how yeah. this thing works. Maybe the guy that runs the restaurant, you know, you eat more than one thing, you know, exactly. and you really can do it. So, what we, our best advice is you've got to focus your learning. So if you're going to a school, boot camp, college, whatever, and it's over 10 different technologies or six or seven technologies, it's not going to lead to a job. Right. You but may pursue the academic, or you may pursue the academic, like right. the, the academia of like learning to code. And maybe that's the goal of right. the course, but don't equate that to also then ch transferring to, to, to getting a job. They are very different things. Right. Correct. So let's say that you went to a bad boot camp course right now and you're like, oh, Bobby, you're tearing down everyone else. What do I do now? Go to Coder Foundry? Is that, is that the answer? <laughs> well, it could be, but like, I think that's not what we're saying. better. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is pick one of those stacks that you've learned at this point, even if it's just cursory, and let's go deep and wide into that particular thing. So for example, this guy that we saw, if he asked me for advice, I would have said, okay, you got Django on here. You've got React on here. I want you to throw one of those out and just pick one of those and let's build some apps on that stuff. And let's stay focused on what we're doing instead of like, we're all over the board here and we don't really have a good project to show because we haven't stopped long enough to sample the entire menu of React. You know, like, you know, we're out there on a, on a language world tour, you know? Right. And so here at Coder Foundry, we, we stay focused on it. And so it's C sharp, C sharp, C sharp. We build um, full stack web applications to C sharp. And one of the more funnier moments in our course is we show um, one of the things, if you ever come in person is we'll show a clip from the movie Hitch. I don't know if you remember Hitch. Yep. Star Will Smith and Kevin James. Okay. And then so Kevin, and he was trying to teach him how to dance at the, when he's going to meet the girl. And so Kevin James doing all these like fancy dance moves, spinning around like that. And Will Smith's standing like this and he's going, and he slaps him on the face and he says, I, I don't want to see none of this, none of this. <laughs> You're right here. Stay with me right here. And so what we have to do is constantly, like when we're teaching students to learn to code for the first time, the world opens up, the brain opens up and they're like, man, but what about this? What about this? What about this? And we're like, no, just bring it, bring it back right here. We're going to stay right here and we're going to build these projects on this stack doing these specific feature sets so we can show them to someone and get a job we're going right. to stay focused right. stay focused on what you're doing don't get distracted by all the shiny lights and everything so and i think um i think so, that's kind of what we want so to do. i think what happens is there's there is advice out there that is the opposite of this the there's opposite. advice out be there that says the exact opposite this is be a generalist right it's like learn as many things as you can however who does that advice come from and who does it go to? Because that advice is also true, yeah. but it's for a different audience. Right. It's for somebody who's so already like, been doing this for a minute. Typically from older people, people that are my age or, you know, maybe five years younger than me, but like <laughs> they're, they're just thinking like, okay, I'm going to be a generalist. I'm not going to focus on anything. I need to learn a lot of things. I'm going to have a plethora of knowledge. I know a lot of languages. Um, and, and so they give that to a junior. Yeah. And so... You got to realize that I think people like this are well-intentioned. They are. It's not like it's, it's yeah, they're not trying to hurt somebody. where they're standing, but they've forgotten what it's like to start out. Yeah. And they're not in the business of trying to get someone a job, their first software job. They can tell you how I get a job, how I navigate this in the world. And they're yeah. like, and they try to translate to someone printing or breaking in their first job. And their advice is typically bad because, you know, They'll say, I don't need a portfolio. You shouldn't build one either. Well, well yeah, but you have a 15 year resume and like yeah, people position. can validate your work. I mean, like, you know, like, you know, or what was your last job at? Well, I was, you know, I was the principal engineer at Microsoft. Yes, you don't need a portfolio. 
like right. you can trade on your <laughs> resume right, you exactly know. yeah it's on your resume you know yeah. oh, i was on the xbox team you know and i, I <laughs> so, like, okay yeah you're going to be you, solid you're, anyway you're exactly yeah you're done yeah. you know you're done for building portfolios but yeah. for someone else who's never had a dev job before and then and i'm not picking on this as a career but let's say your only job up to this point is like delivering pizza working in retail or you've worked at the coffee shop your resume isn't going to help you get a job at all. Right. Like you it, need proof it's actually of work. a detriment. Yeah. You need to have proof of work. And so we have to build these portfolios. The thing that they run into, people run into is like, well, how do I get to the portfolio stage? And they learn eight or nine things. We've had people say, I've learned nine languages. And like, how long have you been doing this? Yeah. And you like haven't six found months, yet? two and a half years. <laughs> like, oh, okay. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. 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 Two and a half years or six months, you know, or something <laughs> like that. So like, yeah. either way, they're taking a, a a world tour of this, you know? So right. I think it's, I think right. you need to stay focused and eat one thing, you know, like that's what we yep. need to do. We need to stay eating one thing and not go to every restaurant on the street. You, you also made a good point previously as well. Like let's say that you are a 10 year vet, you've been doing this for a minute and you do know 10 different stacks, right? And you've built things over those 10 different stacks. Yeah. You made this point that even though you do know those things, you, are still only really using one, maybe two of those things on right. the day to day. At your current position. At your current position. Right. You're not building right. things at a, at, a, at a company in 10 different stacks. Right. I can tell you this. I'm not using COBOL anymore. I'm not using Power Builder anymore. I'm not using VB6 anymore. I'm not using VB.net anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not even using PL SQL and Oracle. I know all of those things. Right. And I'm not going to use those anymore. So like, right. typically even, and this is where it comes from the people we get advice from, don't try to find people jobs. They just found a job for themselves and therefore they look like they're the expert. They don't know what it's like to navigate this minefield. They've also typically haven't been on the hiring side. When, uh, when you're hiring senior engineers and you get a resume in from them, they may have 50 things on their resume all across the top or large skill sets. I've seen them like 18 page wow, resumes. That's impressive. <laughs> I can tell you what a recruiter does, what a hiring manager does, because I've seen the feedback I get back when we present people for consulting gigs. Yeah. They're like, yeah. what are you doing in his last role? What's he doing right now? Yeah. Because that's what really and matters, they, isn't they it? Because they know. know. Yeah. What did you do lately? And it's just yeah, like, it is you know, what like, you do lately. Like that's old, exactly. You know, tell me what you've done lately. You know, it's like the movie guy, you know, Tom Cruise or whatever. You know, like, yeah. so how did your last film do? You know, like, so now he's Top Gun. Okay. He's getting the next gig, you know, but if that was like, <laughs> eyes wide open or whatever that other right. movie was like that was his last gig it was like well we don't know if tom can really deliver anymore you know like eh, it's kind of sketchy it's and so scary. even those senior level engineers stay focused on what they're doing right now and they're trading on that particular skill set they have right now now they may branch out and go you know what i'm tired of doing c sharp i'm going to do a re my next role is going to be in react and so then they they adjust their resume, they adjust their thinking, maybe they build a little side project or whatever, and then they start interviewing for React roles. But they're always specializing. You know, very rarely does a guy get hired and they're like, what can you do? I can do it all, Kevin. It doesn't matter right. what you ask me to do, I can do it all. You know, also very rarely do you go to a company where the company, if you ask them, hey, what do you guys do here? Oh, we're Everything. using nine languages, <laughs> nine yeah. stacks. You know, wherever the wind blows is how yeah. we build the app, you know, and like, and there are, while there are companies yeah. like that kind of, you need to run away from those companies anyway, because they, they're going right. to stay, the ones that stay focused on what they're doing yeah. is the ones that are successful long-term. Plus, plus, I guess if you take like a big company, let's say that you take like a bank, right? You take Bank of America. Yeah. Maybe they are using yeah. nine different technologies, but you right. as an employee aren't coding in nine different technologies, right? They have different divisions no. and different like, like different teams. there's different teams. There's no way you're going to be using all of that stuff. Right. So if you're interviewing for the COBOL team for, you know, Bank of America, you know, yeah. they probably still have COBOL. Still exists, I'm sure. And then you could walk in there and they're like, so what do you do? Well, I'm a C Sharp dev. Like, have you ever been in COBOL before? No, but I can learn it. And then another guy comes in there and goes, I'm a COBOL dev. They're hiring the COBOL person. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like you're saying, well, I can do it. Yeah, you know, the alignment like, you matters. Know, well, do you know anything about top down design? Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I could learn it. You know, I'm a journalist, you know, whatever, whatever moves, whatever floats my boats, what I code it with, you know, and that's where you see the advice is people shouldn't have language wars and it's valid. Every language can be used to build stuff. That's not what I'm saying. But other people say, use the tool that's right for the job. Right. 
And, and I think juniors see that and they're like, oh, so it doesn't matter what I learn. I'm just going to use the tool that's right for the job. No, you're going to use the tool that the company's using that they've determined right. is right for the job. Right. They're not going to say well, today it's React, tomorrow it's C Sharp, the next day it's to Django because I just felt different when I woke up this morning. The CTO got up and said, hey, let's just switch it. I can remember working for a very large corporation and they had a meeting and they came out and they said, the company standards Oracle. We're moving to Oracle. We're like, well, we're in Sybase. And they're like, yes, but the company standard is. Well, surely you don't mean the current. This project <laughs> that I was working on had the Fortune 100 on it. So like, it's right. like, it was very, very big, you know, like very, very big. We were doing yeah. health and welfare enrollment that opened October 15th. You're telling me we're going to switch the database in 15 days. It's not happening. Like, it's just not happening, dude. Like, yeah, you I know it's to. the standard. We can get there, but it's not happening. And so... People think that those decisions just happen um, all the time, and it's not that way. People specialize in what they're doing. They always do. You can learn a lot of things, but, you know, I think it's really funny. They're like, what's your favorite language for a while? And they had this thing came out, and they said, Rust. What yeah. was the number one language you get paid to do? It was <laughs> yeah. C Sharp. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. and they're we always see things. that alignment. Yeah. That Stack Overflow I thing every Rust. year is the same as that. It's always the same. What do they pay you to do? C Sharp. That's yeah. that's what I'm paid to yeah. do. You know, so and you know that's when Rust first came out. It'd been out on the scene for like six months. You know, and yeah. people were talking about it. Like, which is always the way thing. that Stack Overflow. Um, uh, yeah. uh, developer survey is always the same way. The most loved is never the most used. Right. It's just yeah. not. They, they never align. They never align. So. I want this, the people out here trying to learn. I know there's a lot of questions coming. We'll get to them. Uh, like, here's what I want you to learn from our discussion today is I want you to learn a stack that they'll pay you to do. And that doesn't mean it's always the newest or the most famous. It's the one that is most likely to lead to jobs. And I want you to just focus on that. And even when you get something counterintuitive, I know that um, we had another question in here. I noticed he said, Hey, I interviewed for a job. The second view is React. I, I guess I need to pick up React now. I think Otto had put that in there. Yeah. And I was like, well, not necessarily. That just means that that company is using React. Now, if you can pick it up and that's where you want to go, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's fine. You can, you can, you can learn that, you know, the reason they're probably doing that or reason react came in this discussion is they have a back end and C sharp and the front ends and react. Right. And that's a common pairing between the two. Um, as well, imagine what's happening, you know, and sometimes you do want to improve your skills. Um, I think he's been out on the marketplace a lot longer than someone else that just hasn't, you know, you're coming straight from Starbucks. So like we need to like focus in on like one particular stack and trade on that. So, I think you will see this, but even if you saw that and you lose this role, you shouldn't give up on your current stack to go learn another stack because this one particular company said, use that, that you still can um, interview based on what you know today. I want you to stay focused on what you're learning, if, especially in the learning phase. And once you've had a job, by all means, expand your skill set. Definitely. Here it's you go. probably I, I, really I, I kind of like this. Rodriguez said, no one wants to be seen as me, but vanilla pays the bills. Vanilla gets you in the door. Vanilla. It just like, gets you in the door because they need vanilla. Like they make vanilla yeah. here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. They need people who can you make vanilla. You can make vanilla. Yeah, yeah. No, that's it. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. So. That's it. Exactly. Uh, another analogy, another food analogy. Nothing wrong with cheese beans. <laughs> nah, man. And so I also would say that a lot of people are thinking that we want to stay boring. I mean, you can be exotic in what you're you're choosing. It's just that it be fancy you've got to stay Napolitano. on that. You can have fancy stuff, you know, like you, but you need to stay focused right there, you know. Um, and what I'm saying is we're seeing things like Python, the Django, React with JavaScript, C sharp, like, and then they've never held a job before. And those are three different frameworks that they're trying to learn all at the same time. Hey, Bree, thanks, man. Bree, thank you, thank you. If you have a question, throw it Taco up. Thank you. Today. Taco all money. Right. I appreciate it. Taco money. <laughs> I'll put I like your it. name up on the scoreboard. Look, too. You're the last one to look at that. You're dominating the he, scoreboard. He, he, he wants to dominate that scoreboard. That's what it is. <laughs> so, um, let's see. What, what, do you think, what, what do you think about this? I like the name, though. The legendary Kevin in sales. I mean, is this. Hold on. Are you, uh, Kevin, are you legendary, like, self, like, <laughs> are you self-titled legendary or did somebody give you this title? I need to know. This is important. 
but anyway, college students have to learn multiple languages. There's no way around that. But that's pure. Okay. But we're saying that's okay because we're talking about the pure. In college, you're learning academia. You are learning for the sake of learning. Yeah. It, I mean, if you go into is. computer science 102 and they're teaching it in VB, you kind of got to do the class in VB. That I, I get that. That's right. not what I'm saying. When that college student hits the job market, he needs to focus what he's learning. Now, what I would say is most college students that leave a, a four-year CS degree probably still need to start building some things in some other languages We've in order seen to it. get a job. Definitely they do. Yeah, we've seen that all the time. Do they have to go to boot camp? Not necessarily. Some do, some don't have to. What I will tell you this, the legendary Kevin in sales, if you are the legendary Kevin in sales, <laughs> think about getting your job as a sales opportunity, okay? Imagine if you're trying to sell a car and you're trying to sell a car to someone, but you don't focus on a brand. You know, like, hey, just buy whatever brand you want. Well, who do you work for? Ford, but you can buy Toyota. You know, and so like, we have to focus in on what the person we're interviewing wants. And so, and if you focus in the things that you know and expertise in that, you're more likely to land a role that does that. If you come out of college, the reason they have problems are from college is there's no portfolio, there's no projects, there's no real focus on what they're learning and they're just pitching. I can learn that. Right. That's a tough pitch. It's, it it's really tough. tough. Like, yeah. you know, it's really tough. And so like, then someone comes around that wants to be paid just like the other person. Maybe they went to boot camp and they're like, not only can I learn that, I've already done it here. Look at this project. They focused in on what they know how to do and they interviewed for those roles. The reason that when you spam, when you spam 500 roles and you're not getting a job is because your resume doesn't line up with the jobs that you spammed. You don't have a really focus on your job search and you end up just wasting your time doing it. And probably if we went and looked at the guy we were talking about, he got two offers or two offers to two interview is probably because it more likely lined up with sort of what they're doing, but he also didn't win because the projects were kind of weak. The projects were definitely. So the two step process, we know that's why he didn't win. And so, but you can't just spam jobs in hopes that you'll get a job because you've got to align your skills with what the job's looking. And typically most companies have a stack they're working on. And even like you said, if they have multiple stacks in the company, it's they have a team they're interviewing for and that team is using a particular stack and you need to align with that. If you do that, you'll find it, you're more likely to win instead of lose a lot and get discouraged and say, no one hires juniors. That's where it comes from. Right. No one hires right. juniors. That's what they yeah. say. So Kevin decided to yeah. be legendary. He's manifesting 101. I like it. <laughs> I like that. Just, it's, this, this is the dress for the it. job you want mentality, not not the job yeah, you have, exactly. right? <laughs> so Kevin, should I just buy the Lambo right now? Should I buy the Lambo right now? Is that, is that what I need to do? I, I think so. I think that's the okay, answer. Right. I think that is the answer. Or rip that, one and just Kevin's take pictures saying. of me driving it. As it. Maybe I can do that, that. That could be it too. Yeah, yeah. That, that could be it too. Why own when you can rent? Right? You're not going to drive every day. Okay, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, what else? Uh, let me see. Lawson also says, cool, I just finished uh, my blog project V2 about Star Movie Pro. Cool. Nice. I like it. Yeah, start showing that blog around. Write some real blogs in it. Um, take what I would say, Juggerot, is take the top 30 interview questions. I know that's written in ASP.net because I know you're in the course here. And just blog on 10 of those. Um, we're getting ready to do that with the current cohort here and said, hey, you got the week. Pick three of the interview questions we've given you and write a blog on it, you know, as they finish their blogs up. So, um, yeah. You go. Just, just to clarify what we're saying here, I'm just, I'm just finished college degree, uh, bachelor's in software development. So bachelor's in software development last spring, they didn't necessarily teach you yep. a programming language. Languages were Java, C++, and Python. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about those three languages. Let's talk about Java, C++, and Python, all right? And this is what I'm getting to. Java, it being a general purpose programming language, a lot like C Sharp. In fact, C Sharp probably takes a lot of cues from Java. Um, it can be used to build lots of things. Um, you can build websites, obviously it's used a lot for. For a while it was used in Android development. I think they're moving past that. Um, but it's a very general purpose language, C++. Typically what you see that for is like embedded devices or 
things that run behind the scenes. You know, typically when you're thinking of that, you're and thinking I'm, electronics. I'm guessing because this is a bachelor's in software development, that's why, because you're learning these different things, yeah. because you yeah. did different things with them. Right. And then you got Python. Python's used a lot in data science, can be used in um, web development. So all three of them are used for different things typically. And so when you go out and he's trying to get a job, oranges to oranges, like you're going to get a job, you, if you want a job, let me give you some advice here. You need to decide, A, what am I trying to build and what type of job do I want? Do I want to code websites? Do I want to be in data science? Do I want to work embedded like on, you know, the Xbox team at Microsoft or some kind of like, you know, set box Roku device? Is that where I want to work? What type of job do I want? And then you're going to pick the stack based on that job. And then that's the, that's the portfolio item you need to build. So if you just finished it, you do need something to show somebody that you've built, you know, some of that, whether it be Java, Python, C++, doesn't matter. And I would say, pick one of those three, pick one of them out of that three set and build something with it and target that job with it. And that's what I mean by stay focused. Don't wander around, you know, we're, we're just exactly. going through the wilderness of languages, you know, yep. Yep. stay that's focused exactly. on where we're going. I hope that helps. Uh, let me see. I'll come back to some earlier questions, but I want to also come back to some that are on topic for this. Uh, Richard says, if you list too many languages, wouldn't employers wonder why you haven't had jobs in some of those other languages at least? So maybe, but they're hiring for a particular language. So when they look at your resume and you got your skill section, they're going to look at your last job and what you did in your last job. It's pretty, little, pretty much what they're interested for. I can tell you when requests come in here, and um, they're requesting me to find someone, you know, it's like, hey, we need an ASP.NET developer. This is what we do. We build web APIs and it's just what we do. And I present them someone, a Java developer, they're not going to interview them. Yeah, we see it all the time. So don't we? you have to, we see it all the time. So you have to have that particular thing they're looking for on the resume. And then if it's on the resume listed as a skill, but their last job was in a different stack, they're going to get turned down too. They're going to say, well, his last job is, isn't, um, kind of what we're doing right now it looks like he hasn't done c-sharp in 12 months that's and 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 to some of these developers or some of these people interviewing that might as well be 10 years or 20 years you know like you know like so like it seems like it's too long ago for them to translate over to it they want someone that's more current and i'm just i'm not telling you that to discourage you i'm telling you this is how we win at finding the job is we match our resume our skills our projects and everything with the job that they're doing and we focus in, dude. We focus narrowly on like what we're trying to win at. And um, so if you have too many languages, it doesn't mean they won't interview, but they're definitely going to look at your last role or your projects or whatever you're building. So if you don't have a last role and you're coming straight out of a CS program, I think to this day, and I'll, I'll probably die saying this, you know, I'll be here on YouTube at 95 years old going, <laughs> you need to build a project, Kevin. That's what we need to do. So you need to build a project you can show that has proof of work that says, hey, I built something in ASP.NET and C Sharp. Here it is. Let's look at it. I know that you're using ASP.NET and C Sharp. So it looks like I'm a good match for this. If you show them something built in Java, it's not, it's, it's, it's a tougher conversation that you got to overcome during your pitch process, which is you're selling it, you know, so, but you you've got the wrong demo, you know, like, I think it's really akin to like, Hey, I'm trying to buy a car and you start demoing motorcycles to guys, you know, like, Hey, it's just as fast as that car. It, it's better on gas. I'm like, I know it's, but it's a motorcycle, but <laughs> yeah. you know, look at this. You'll feel free when you're driving it. Like, uh, you know, like, yeah, no, I, I get the trade-offs. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I was looking for a sedan at this point. You're trying to sell me a motorbike. You know, I don't think so. I don't think I can get my, my three-year-old on the back of the motorcycle. So like, you know, that's a problem for us. So where do I put the car seat in that thing? So. Exactly, exactly. So Connor <laughs> has a point here, um, and, we, and we, we actually see this a lot. So uh, bachelors in um, uh, computer science or software engineering is meant to prepare yourself so for yep. 95% of software careers. You still have to self-study for one of those jobs, though. So, and you're right, picking whatever whatever you're going into. We, we see we see plenty of um, CS grads come to Coda Foundry. They come to our, uh, yes. our virtual course to, to take those extra right, 12 weeks. Because they know they have the smarts coming in. And we test them coming in. We'll see people come in and they're like, 
they'll ace our interest exams. They're like, oh, that was easy. They just need proof of work, and that's what they're here to do. Yeah. And they sell right through the program. They build a bunch of websites. They get a job immediately. Um, and so I think, but um, Connor is exactly right. You're going to have to, if you want a game job in today's market, you got to build a game. It's right. very <laughs> difficult to like win at any of these. And I'm talking, when I say game job, I'm talking about AAA studio. You're going to, you know, Insidious or, you know, Epic or whatever, and you're trying to get a job there. You need to show them something so they can know that you could do it, <laughs> you know? And you can't just say, I graduated in college in game design. I went to Full Sail or I went to NC State or wherever. It doesn't matter where you went. Can you do the job we're hiring for? Even if it's at the junior level, you need to be a build a game before. Um, that means that shows a couple of things. A, you can do it. B, you're interested in it. So if you want to build websites, you should be able to build a website before you get there. They're not going to train you to build the website or to build the game. Um, they expect you to be trained when you come in so that you can solve the problems they're looking for. So Connor's exactly dead on right. Yep. That's it. You know, and that's, I think that's the difference between a boot camp and CS. CS will give you a broad thing and there's a lot of really valuable things in there. Boot camp's going to say, we're going to teach you how to do one thing. We're going to build websites with databases here at Coder Foundry and we're going to build a bunch of those so that when you go out, when they ask you to build a website with a database, you can do it. And that's, that's, that's where I think where boot camps do a good job coming in is like taking someone, focusing their skill set in. But the problem I see is some boot camps don't do that. They, they, they're still broad. They're still like teaching at the broad level. And I think that's a mistake. I think you need to stay focused on what you're doing. So you'll see people like build a website and use Unity to build a game in 12 weeks. And like, it's a waste of time, man. Like, <laughs> like, what are we doing? Are we yeah, doing like games or building yeah. websites? What are we doing here? And so you need to decide what you want to build and then self study or go to a boot camp or take a course or whatever after that. I think it'll help you a lot. There you go. Let's see. Um, Orgnos, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't know if, if I'm butchering it, I apologize. Um, this is, uh, if my long term goal is audio development and building apps around DSP, should I be focusing on C instead of web dev? 100%. Yeah. You're going to get a web dev job if that's what you focused on. Right, because right. What you know how to do. It's the same point you're having here. So it's difficult to yeah. transition from one thing to the other when your proof of work is all in web and you apply for a job building at an audio development right. company and that is misaligned. It's just way can, more difficult. I, I can tell you one of my pains today. I had a guy interviewed today for a job that we're 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 um, trying to place. All right, today. Yep. And this is I'm not making this up because he he was a web dev. But we sent him over to, and they agreed to interview him. We sent him to a company that has a device that um, measures the lining inside of cans like this. They go yeah. in there and they measure the, the lining in here. If you don't know, if you drink an aluminum can, there's a lining in here that keeps you from dying from aluminum poison, you know, so in the manufacturing <laughs> right. process. But you have to measure that lining on the inside of it and they have a probe that do it and they sell it all over the world. Well, that's, even though it is C Sharp and they have a, a, a website that's working the interface to that, it's all about hardware development. And they're like, ah, he's a web, he's a web dev. We want someone that does this, you know? And so we didn't, they turned him down even after they interviewed him and they wow. felt like, well, he's a really good programmer. He knows a lot about programming, but he hasn't done this type of program before. And we don't have time to do that. That's the feedback. He doesn't get the job. And I'm this guy, super smart, 10 years of doing this stuff, you know, like you, you yep. and that's what I, I tell people. That's why I give you device. If people say it doesn't matter, I can program anything I want and I can get a job, whatever you want. I say, Hey, they're lying or they're a really good interviewer. But for the most part of us, we are what we build. That's what we know how to do. Because that's the only build, thing we've been able to prove, isn't it? You're gonna get. Everything else yeah. is just hearsay. Everything else is just speculation. Speculation. I've seen people get turned down and it's not that he's dumb. And it's not that he can't code. He probably could do the job. They just don't believe he can. And that's because he doesn't done anything with hardware. You know, now if he, if he walked in there with a, a Lego set, a little robot and he communicated to it, like, you know, and it, it made toast or something, then yeah, we got a <laughs> job. So August, long story short, you want to get in around DSP, build apps to do that, build apps that do that. And then that way you can win in that particular industry. Otherwise, you're basically saying I'm going to be a web dev by coding on web dev. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's a really great career, but like if you want to do something else, 
you're probably going to need C++ and building things in your future. So you need to get some equipment out and build some apps in and around that so you can show people how to do that, how you would do it. So. You, know, you just reminded me of something I saw on LinkedIn this morning. I saw on LinkedIn yeah. this morning. So uh, Chase Bank, JP Morgan Chase, are based out of their, one of their headquarters is in Columbus, Ohio. They have, they have the biggest office space in the US, right, in Columbus. It's this massive, okay. it's this giant, giant building. It's, it's, it's a campus, right. right? It's huge. So on this campus now, somebody had posted they have a, a robot coffee machine. A, ro a robot barista, okay. right? That is like, it's making right. like Starbucks style drinks, but it's one of these robotic arms that like makes it. It's right. very, it just, it just reminded me like somebody programmed that. I don't know if they're on staff or they purchased it from somewhere or what, I don't know. No. I think it's almost one of these, like somebody on the staff, like decided like, we need to test this thing. So let's just have it make coffee. Maybe it's going to be your new like teller or something. I don't know. But like they have it right. in the building, like this robot barista. So, I was like, that's so kind of cool. Let me ask you a question. Do we yeah. have to tip the robot? Should we tip the robot? Ooh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Why do we tip people? Because Same, they get I mean, paid less. Okay, so so the robot doesn't way. get paid, right? So I guess we don't. Right. right. We don't need to tip. So them. no, I guess we don't. Can we just agree <laughs> on that, everybody? In the future, we'll just agree right here and right now that we can that we do away with tipping if um, the robot take over. And they're all, yeah. you know, you, now your service I mean, at restaurants. I ain't your tipping pieces. a robot ever. We don't. Yeah. I mean, hey, like, maybe there's something to this, uh, this, this thing here. Maybe, uh, you know, it does away with all the jobs and people are doing different jobs, I guess, but we no longer have to tip. Yeah, uh, plus or minus. <laughs> 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 it depends, depends on your view of that. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna come back to Orange's uh, Orange's question at the end here. All right. we, have, we actually have an announcement. Um, so stick around for an announcement because we do have something to announce at the end here. Um, oh, so we right, do. I so about we, that, we yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. So right, right for the job is also subjective. Every Rust Randy will tell you that Rust is the right <laughs> job. <laughs> I would have heard of that <laughs> one. That one's good. That's good. <laughs> run you C plus plus. Okay, but that's true. That this is true. We talked about this a lot. We've talked about this before. Like when you ask a developer. Um, like what the best thing is, it's usually it's usually not aligned with what they're doing on the job. But even when it right. is, they're like, even if you really probe them about it, Rust Randy will probably also tell you, like he would probably still tell you, like uh, Rust is great, but you you probably shouldn't learn it because it's 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 there's not a lot of jobs in it. If he's being honest, right. he would probably tell you that. Right. The, here's what I would say, and, and the, I think we've seen you before because we can't pronounce your name. O X F T F. So like um. What I would say is, if you like using C++, great, all right? That's the job that you're going to get hired to do. It's very hard to go take that and, and jump into a rush job. Unless the interviewer says that we're going to um, hire people with C++ skills and train them in Rust. And that, that could be a thing, you know, because there's not many Rust people out there. Um, but typically, that company is going to hire the skill set for the stack that they're using inside that job. And so if you want a Rust job, you better learn Rust. You can't sit there and go, hey, I've got C++ skills. I can learn Rust on the job. There's going to be 10 other guys that know Rust and you'll lose in the interview process. You know, unless you're a really good salesman, unless you're the legendary Kevin of sales, you know, like the legendary Kevin of sales could probably win them. Well, he's going to talk himself into anything, <laughs> isn't he? He's selling ice to like the penguins, right? I mean, the manifesting like, 101, I'm manifesting it. So. He's selling everything to everybody. Um, so. Yeah. Speaking of the legendary Kevin of Sales, this answers another one of his questions. So it makes for a good internship. Should it be more coaching or more do this, finish, move on to the next? Huh. What makes for a good, you know what I'm going to say. Well, you know yeah, what makes money. a good internship? Money. money. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll do whatever you want as long as you pay me, you know. So um, here's the thing that people, I think, expect too much from internships. And I do think companies use the, the term wrong a lot of times. Um, that, number one, they're bringing in people they normally wouldn't hire. I think that's really what internships are and see if they can find a diamond in the rough. So Microsoft has a has a goal or whatever, but Microsoft pays. They do. So they they, they pay real well. Have, they pay really well for their, um, if you go through their elite program. Yeah. So do they have some 
parts of coaching in it probably but it's probably more of like do this finish that move on to the next it's probably more likely what happens i think actually doing the work of working on the teams and doing stuff and do this finish that move on to the next is more beneficial than you sitting in a bunch of meetings and people telling you how it should be done i think there could be a blend of both maybe say this is how we do it here at microsoft um this is the pattern we follow this is what you need to do but at the end of the day doing the hard skill of like finishing and completing a task and rolling it out that's really the most beneficial thing that you can do I'm so if that helps back to the robot thing real quick <laughs> so boston diamond's changing the game the robots are very impressive what they're making it is so those videos are crazy we i watch those videos whenever they come out they're very interesting we made a joke about this last time with that last one that came out because that thing that's thrown around the tools, and, and I know you've seen the video because everyone's seen this one thrown around tools. What, what happens when it like doesn't know the chainsaws on? Exactly. It yeah. Like, so it's like it's it's cool. I, it is cool. It's, but I, I do cool. like it. It's interesting. Yeah, but I don't I don't think like if the robot, it's got a long ways to go. A lot of people think that that robot did that without it being programmed to do that. Yeah, they didn't tell like, it like, hey, deliver that guy the bag, and it just did it. That's not what it did. No, and, and they're not saying it, it had a. It had obstacle course that they they pre-engineered and they set it up to do it and it did the task that it was programmed to do yeah what's the difference between that and like your 15 year old son that's helping you build your deck in the back is that you can tell your 15 year old hey man get me the tools and he brings you and hands you the hammer a typical and if he throws the hammer at you you yell at him you know it's like hey dude don't throw the hammer at me like just hand it to me you know i'm trying to do this so i think that's the difference and the boston dynamics isn't as good as your 15 year old son that's helping you build the deck yet yes also, it can do a cartwheel off the front of it great which was that's cool fantastic. which 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 i can't do it was way so, cool. so brent just went a to a restaurant and canceled my first robot server that's awesome i do want to go to one of those i think that's cool two days later went to check out the gas mall and all i do is place my eyes on a flat surface yes yeah, so i did this um where's this at um, Greensboro Airport here has one. They have a self-service, flat service, uh, little kiosk with, it's unmanned, right? There's no mm -hmm. person at this thing. It's a little store. You walk in and you pick what you want. You put it on this flat surface. It tells you everything that you've purchased. You basically, I tap my watch on it and that's it. I purchased it. No interaction with anyone. But what if you, me. what if you don't pay? What does it do? I don't know. I don't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't test that's it. The problem. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't test this theft the, mechanism. Yeah, you, didn't, you didn't go into thievery <laughs> mode. <don't you? laughs> I, didn't, I didn't test the thievery <laughs> mode. You know, when you're in an airport, because there's extra, like, you know, there's just, there's a bunch of guys with guns around in airports, right? It's like, it's a common thing. Right. There's like, you know, there's TSA over here. You always see there's, there's always a cop wandering around with like his, 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 at least there is in the US anyway. There's a cop wandering around with yeah. a gun somewhere. So it's always like, you know, it's not the best time to try and steal something, you know, from, yeah. a, from an airport. Pro probably not very small. So I didn't want to test but I think, it, but I thought it was I interesting. I think in the business, that's called shrinkage. You know, shrinkage is like when things leave the building without them being paid for. I don't think those can work unmanned. I, I really don't. I, I think it's great. It's some kind of analysis. Yeah. And that's the problem with a lot of technology that we get. It's a solution looking for a problem. Or it's like, hey, what if you don't need an attendant? Well, the attendant does more than just scan the items, you know, like right. it does more than that. Like, so like that's, that's where, you know, the robots don't know, you know, now if they put the RoboCop in there, RoboCop <laughs> is managing it. Yeah. Well, we're all going to end up with the, what is it? The, uh, the, the, Ed 2000 or something like that. What was the big one yeah, called with the big guns on it yeah. that couldn't walk upstairs, right? That right, was the, and you forgot to it. scan the pack of gun, the, the you know, a pack, a pack of gun, and he knows it, and he puts 42 bullet it's, holes in the back. You know, it's like, all right though. Just run down some stairs. It, 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 won't, it won't be <laughs> exactly. able to get down. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Okay, uh, let's go to what time. We are here 48. I'm gonna do couple more and then we'll talk about we have we've announcement to make there's a couple of questions that we can talk about the announcement okay that's kind of cool I, yep. I, I like it you guys are going to give me a nice uh, a nice segue yeah um let's see uh bavani says i'm currently working on both back end front end a little bit of aws but i in the future i may need to learn uh, ai machine learning or rust based on my organization decision here's what i'm telling you and this is what i'm saying that is that is three different things that you're looking at. And so it's okay. If your company says, Hey, I need you to do AI ML right now, go do it. And they pay you to learn it. That's a different situation. But like right. what we're talking about is someone that's learning machine learning. They got a little DevOps. They're learning that they're also working on back in front end full stack development. 
and they want to do embed development with Rust. I mean, those are four different jobs there, four different skill sets, four different things. And um, notice here, what I want you to notice what this guy said here is, is I'm currently working on both back end and front end. What we're talking to is someone who is currently at Starbucks trying to break into dev and they think I can go back in front end, a little bit of AWS. I need to learn machine learning and I need to learn Rust for embedded just in case. Right. You know, because yep. someone told me Rust is the best language in the planet, you know, and none of those learning activities are targeted towards a specific job or a specific goal. And what I'm saying is learn web dev then build it with web dev tools. If you want to do sound processing, use sound processing tools with C++. C++. You want to learn data science, Python's in your future. That's what you're going to be doing it for. So, and if you want to be DevOps, yeah, you need to go to AWS, get certified. Probably they look at certifications in AWS and Azure and learn how all of that works and what are the tools and things for me to be successful in doing that. And I think that, that but if you're already working, Absolutely, dude, you can transfer to any job you want after you have a job, you'll learn some stuff and it's easy for you. It's probably easier, you know? Um, so, but for us, for some of us, that's not easy because I haven't, I don't have a job yet. So I just can't learn it. But in the future, you may need to learn AI ML. I get it. If your company asks you to do it, you'd go do it. Just like I had to learn Oracle when that company switched it. Eventually the Oracle was in my future. We did it. Yeah. You're yeah, like, I can't do it this people. week, but yeah. it had to happen. Yeah, right? so exactly. You, just, <laughs> you know, you it was in my future it. though. And I did, I learned it and it was kind of cool. It was kind of fun, but it was a different, it was definitely a lot of work and a lot of game changing to, to do that. But, you know. And hey, Connor, I got you on the question next anyway, actually. Um, yeah. I was going to get to it. I just, uh, I knew you asked it near the beginning. So kind of want to know for the bug tracker, does it need to look slash operate like professional software? Or is it enough to have uh, authorization, security, roles, database, basic CRUD UI? Both. Here's what I think. I think it should look as professional as you can make it. They're going to judge your bug tracker based on the very first page they look at. So I think it should have a landing page that says, Hey, this is my bug tracker. Give it a name, give it a logo, all that kind of stuff. And then that first homepage, the index page, you have some graphs and stuff, make it look as pro as you possibly can. And then, um, as you move into the interiors, this should be functioning and should work great. But if you put a, a template on it, it'll pull it all together. I think, um, definitely if you get to a crud page and nothing's lined up and your UI is all over the board, you yeah, can't just find because the it button. technically works and, but everything technically works, it's still going to be yeah. an issue, isn't it? Yeah. So what you can do Connor is get someone that doesn't know how to use it and see if they can figure out how to use it. And then, um, those kind of things. And that'll kind of work out some of the UI or UX, um, experience that people have. So, you know, I think you can do that. Now, what can we do when we're demoing the bug tracker and we know that parts of our system are really polished and parts aren't, can I still win? Yes. And this is where scripted demos come in, where you demo the things you want them to see at this point and you show them the, the parts that you're really proud of at that part, but don't go to the broken janky sections of the app because you haven't finished those yet. <laughs> but it should look professional. Yes, that's your goal. Buy a template, put a template on it, make it look as pro as you possibly can make it. Yep, definitely. Hope that helps, uh, Connor. See this one, and then we'll do, do a little announcement at the end here. Uh, so, hey, Bobby and Kevin, I started learning web development back in the second half of 2021. I learned Mernstack, but I couldn't continue due to some issues. Now I'm back at it. Should I start from the bottom? I'd say that you... I would say keep learning. If you already know Mern, don't need to start over. I mean, like, you know, let's like, unless you just want to and you're going to go somewhere else. So, um, yeah, you're going to get bored again if you're doing the same thing. If you learn, like, I see people out here and they've learned, like, the basics of HTML like five times because they keep going, they yeah, get to, because right, they get to JavaScript, right? And they're like, wow, that's confusing. And then they quit right. for like a few months and they come back again. They're like, I and need to start, start over again. And they start over at yeah. HTML again. And it's like, you get, that's a vicious cycle to get through. Try and push yeah. past that. Yeah, just keep on with Mern. Um, so that's React Node. Um, you could, instead of Mongo, instead of Mern, I think SQL's better. Um, but like, um, you know, I don't know if the total Mern stack is used as much as people say it is. But React is, Node is, I get that. Um, but I would say a SQL database is probably better. Um, but other than that, man, just 
if you already know some stuff, keep learning that stuff and keep getting expertise in that and build bigger and bigger projects with it so that you can get a job. So, but if you've forgotten everything, you know, it's two years ago now, then maybe you do need to start over. I don't know what you remember, but I would say go back to where you uh, started from and see if you still remember it. And there's a good chance you do. You might not do it from memory, but then you start getting it and you're like, oh, okay, I remember this. Yeah, I'm getting back in the swing of things and keep going. Hope that helps. Yep. Okay, so a couple of questions, and I'll put I'll put each each one of these up, and then we can kind of talk about this. But uh, I yep. just want just want to know: Is there a shorter course by Coder Foundry for college grads to assist in getting work? And also, where can I get a portfolio or resume review? Okay, these are kind of related. So <laughs> we do get this asked quite a bit, and and so depending on how you perceive our announcement, you may love it or you may hate us. I don't I don't know, but like. I am going to expose the instructor staff to people that are either in the self-paced course or maybe you're not in the self-paced course at all. And so there are some limitations that we're going to do. So you can't book an appointment with an instructor. There is a fee a call uh, associated with it. Um, and so it's for an hour and um, basically we'll, we'll do a couple of things. We'll look at your portfolio. We'll look at your projects. What we're, we can't do, um, we'll tell you the limitation is, and the instructor will tell you right away is if you've got your homework in python we're not going to do your homework for you during the hour but if you have <laughs> course content and you're working on the bug tracker or you're working on the blog or you're working on some other things we can help you with those projects so anything in our course we can go into great detail and help you help you write some code overcome some problems if you've got a portfolio and you just want us to review it and say hey what does my portfolio look like the guys you'll talk to are experts in building portfolios and like making sure that they're they're ready for interview yep. um, also interview skills if you're inside of the interview skills that we do which is javascript html css c sharp those kind of things we can um we also can tell you um hey does my linkedin profile look good we can tell you kind of what you should do there and point to you some resources yep. so there's a lot of things that we can do in there so you can book it it's only going to be on tuesdays and thursdays right now we have a limited access to the instructors um, so 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 2, 3, 4, 5, because these guys got to go home and eat dinner and stuff like that and watch <laughs> Netflix. So, you know, um, so if you want to book a, book some help, we'd like, we'd like to do it. If that's too expensive for you, we totally get it. And a lot, a lot of times we can do a, we do some portfolio reviews on here on the show, but we don't do it every week or you guys wouldn't come back and watch us do portfolios every week. So <laughs> and I'm going to show you what this looks like. To make too, sure just... we cover topics people are interested in. Definitely. and not just portfolio reviews but we try to do those every so few many weeks five or six weeks apart i don't know when's the last time we did one but um yeah we'll, we'll, we'll come back and yep. do the do those kind of free ones again at some point but you can at this point you can basically buy one so you can go if you go to uh, learn.coder foundry you can go to uh courses page or actually on the pricing page too um there's this section and you can go here and you can purchase those uh and i've already purchased one so you can actually see yeah what you already like. purchased it um, so it appears in your products and you can view that product and then you can basically you can book a session so when you book this session the cool thing is you can add items you want to talk about you can add details and agenda items you can add some notes in there you can also upload um, files here as well like if you're working on something you could upload something um, and then you can basically schedule your session you basically schedule your session now on a calendar and you can say I want to do Thursday at 2.30 and I can confirm that right. and I'll cancel this in a second um there you go. You can schedule it, and it's all all done through um, through our uh, Learn Code Foundry platform here. Um, you'll you'll jump in here at a certain time. The instructor will be here waiting for you, and then yeah, you can ask whatever question. Yeah, it's all done with you know video like a Zoom. It'll like look like a Zoom type call. You'll share. You can share your screen with them. Those kind of things. The one thing we can't do is take over screens currently. But um, if you are coding inside the course and you need us to help you take over your screen help you show you something inside that course there's a we do have a workaround for that but we can do that on a case-by-case -case basis but in general you share your screen with us we talk to you live um, so you'll need a webcam and a microphone and a computer that we so we can help you with what you're looking for so i think it's gonna be super valuable um these guys are really good at what they're doing Yep. So yes, yeah, it's, like it's just it's just like a yeah, cool. it's just yeah, in the web. It's in a browser. It's in the web browser. Yeah. So so you don't have to have load download an app or anything like that. Yep. Um, and it works pretty good. We've tested it. We're kind of pleased with it. It works yeah. pretty well. 
yeah, that's um, cool. pretty seamless. So it should work well, really well. Yep. So if you want so, to meet instructors, so yeah, so those are open as of now. So you can uh, yeah, right now. You can, so uh, you can except for the one those, Kevin just booked. So. Except, well, I just canceled it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I just booking time. That's it. I'm, so. I'm booking up all the time. I get them for free, so I just show up. Yeah. And just like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, um, yeah. So I have to tell the instructors now. Ignore that one. That's just me. That's you know, I'm sure yeah. that one. Um, so yeah. So that's a that's a new uh, that's a new thing. A lot of people have asked for it, so that's why we've done it too. It's like not we're not just inventing this out of thin air. People have often asked us like, hey, do you have like a, you know, can we get like an hour of your time or whatever? Like we've just never done it right. before, so we thought we'd just throw it out there. Um, yeah, and you'll find the instructors are really good. You're gonna get Antonio or uh, Jacob, and these guys know 100 percent everything. We're about. Yeah, like, and a lot of things that we don't have in the course they know about. So, like, there's a lot of chances if you get in there and they're asking you things, they'll probably know about it. Um, but um, I've instructed them to kind of stay in a certain wheelhouse so that we can provide maximum value. So everything we do here at Cutter Frame, we'll make sure it's it's valuable. Um, that your t your time is honored and you get value out of that. So like um, that's why there's a short window, so they're not over overbooked, and that we're always provide. And we're going to tell you what we can do and what we're not going to do. So if you got if you got a homework problem in your CS course, we're not we're not a tutor. Yeah. But um, if you're working in the self paced course, we know everything there is to know about that. We'll help you out with C sharp and those kind of things. So Definitely. and you'll see um, um you'll see like. Uh, Jacob in the Discord answering questions. You'll see that he knows those projects inside and out. Like, but if yeah. you need like more personalized help, that's like you know, you, you yeah. just need somebody to walk you through it more than just like yeah. a quick question on Discord. It's the it's the thing to do. So yeah, so there is some free things from us. If you join Discord, you can ask, you can post questions in there. If you're in the platform right now today and you're learning stuff, you can ask questions. Um, Jacob pretty much answers all those questions. We try to be active in discord but if you need something personal and you want to get an hour of, of time with him or antonio um then i think this is the way to do it yep. it's pretty good yeah. helps a lot and if you just need to know how to improve your job search we'll help you do that this is what you need to do and this is what you need to look at we'll look at your portfolio even if you didn't build it with us we'll look at your portfolio Oh yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, they don't. You apps don't have to be built with us. You you like your portfolio. Does you have to come to Coda Foundry? We don't want to limit it to that. Yeah. Right. Um, so we do um, for students here too. Some of the students, if you've been in the class before, you know, and you need a specific job prep, then this is the way you're going to do that, um, so that you can guarantee, like, hey, I've got an interview in two days. Can you help me with some job prep? and say you've been out of Coder Foundry for two years or something like that, and then you can call in. This is the way you'll do it. Obviously, with current students, we that's included in your um, in what you're doing if you're in the in the in the in-person class already. So, so again, anybody interested we're just trying in this? to expand what we can do for people and try to help them. We can. You can go to the courses tab, and it's down here at the bottom. That's right yeah. So the other thing, some free stuff in here. We can look at um, one of the free ones here. We might as well show the free stuff. So. Um, <laughs> Coding challenges is free and LinkedIn is free. I think those are really good. So those are two things that we've released recently that um, I think are free that uh, you can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really like the LinkedIn course. I think that's a really cool course. I think I did that one. Did Sorry. I do that one? Is that me? I can't remember the things I've done. I haven't done. So I think <laughs> that's me. Um, so there's a lot in here that you obviously got to pay for. But like um, that LinkedIn course is really, really cool. Yeah, I did that one. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. so. lots of good stuff in here. So that's a free one. If you're looking for something free, jo um, um, JavaScript coding challenges. I did that one too. And that one's free. Um, so there's a couple in there. I think we could have easily charged for coding challenges in JavaScript, but we decided to make it free. So there's some things in there that are really cool. Yep. So, all right. Any, um, what's covered in the coding challenges? Oh, just, um, just go look. It's free. Go, there's 11 of them. Just go look at it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just go. Uh, yeah, just you know. It's, um, we we what we did was I'll just tell you. I think um, OXFTF. I need to know what OXFTF stands for. <laughs> like I wish I knew. I know it's binary for something. Maybe I don't know FTF. It's I don't know if binary. that's binary. It's, but like, huh? No, it's not binary. It's gonna be forty-two. What well, anyway? But like um, <laughs> maybe. What we did was at the time we built it, we just looked at like eleven common coding challenges we saw our students getting so we decided to create answers for those 
so that they could overcome those in um, while they're interviewing. And so this was really started as a resource for the current students and we decided to make it free. Um, so like, um, it's just, it's not every question you ever meet, but if you can do all of them, you probably can solve the other ones as well. So there's 11 in there. They range from super easy to hard. So, um, is it not, is it all of them? No, you can go to leak code and see some other ones too as well. So, but this gives you a framework to how to build them. You use VS code to code them up. And so we have a UI that we use and then, so there's a lot to it and building them out. And then we go through, try to go through detailed explanations of like how they work and what, how you do them, how you be able to build them out. So, yeah, and just go to learn.coderfinder.com. Just go yeah. there, as a, sign up, get a free account, uh, yep. and you'll see the free courses in there. Yep. So, yep, just sign up for a free account, then you get all the free courses just assigned to you anyway yep. once you've uh, once you've signed up for a free account. So. And if you need help, just book a time with some instructor, and they'll help you out. So that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, we're excited to uh, to get that out there. We wanted to do this for all right. Day. Cool. Cool. Uh, let's call it a day. We'll be back again uh, next. Th Thursday working on another video so we'll probably see something else from us before then um, yeah but yeah yeah we hopefully help out some out. more people all right well good luck and keep coding we'll see you next week we'll catch you guys later